Hey guys, did the awesome here to give you to get another Monster Legends guide where we talk about monsters, moves, rune sets, partners, all that jazz. Today we are taking a look at Wolfgang. Believe it or not, my boys, he's actually based on one of my subscribers. He's actually made by one of my subscribers of the same person who we are talking about right now, and that's your boy Wolfgang. That's right, folks. This this guy uh, who is a subscriber who is on my team actually too uh, sent his design to social point and they're like hey this seems cool let's add him to the game at some point in time he's not in the game yet as the time of recording this guide uh, but yeah this is this is by his own design he, he designed this send it to social point uh, congratulations my boy uh, the day you get to guide uh, you know the monster you know your monster you know a guide by me for your monster, your boy. <laughs> this is kind of how I would run them. All that jazz. What my thoughts are. All that jazz. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Power. 3,465 at 100. Uh, the gospel power. This is the non-complaining power of any damage dealer in the game. If you got this power, non-complaint. Even when there's higher damage options you could go with, this is, this is the fine power. This is the power where it's like, hey, this power is okay. You can run it as a damage dealer. It's fair game. So there's no, it's not a it's not like overly powerful. It's not under below average. This is a good power. So this is good. This is a good power stat. Thirty. Uh, its life is thirty one thousand six hundred sixty seven. Fairly tanky monster. I will say in terms of earth monsters, it, it's not the highest life for an earth monster, but it's a pretty good life nonetheless for an, like any monster. Period. Thirty thirty one k is nothing to really spit at. Uh, and this monster you'll find can be relatively tanky. It it, it might very very rarely take any form of damage. Uh, in terms of facing AI opponents, it's very good at sponging AI, AI damage. If it, if it was against, like, a player, uh, maybe not so much, but, you know, in this game, it's kind of just AI battles. So, I, I feel like he's really good at uh, tanking a against a a a you know, NP APCs. Uh, a NPCs, there you go. So, non-player characters. Uh, bases, you know, like, you know, the AI. <laughs> the AI, is, it's good against AI opponents. Uh, speed... 3,476. This is a very, very, very fast attacker or damage dealer. I think this is like Volt Speed, right? <laughs> it, it's a pretty fast speed. Uh, not gonna lie, my boys. Uh, so it outpaces quite a few monsters, especially some of the best dark damage dealers in the game. I, I will say if they're running either, uh, if you're facing a 1 speed, you know, Barbatos, Razul, what have you, or a... Is IOFX, uh, you can kind of outpace it, uh, depending on if you're running two speeds or really uh, the better speed, or you know team speed holders, or you have those in your possession, uh, which is really, really, really good for it. However, it's not too good. I will say it's not too good against IOFX specifically because it's special base damage. And it's like, damn, why would that matter? Well, the uh, the nice thing about this monster is you'll see in a bit. I don't want to spoil it too much. <laughs> uh, Trait. Its trait is tough. That means it has a 35% less chance of not getting hit by any form of deny or any form of status effect in the game. You're just likely not to get hit with anything. This is a general trait. It's always been a great trait. It's a trolley trait, and it's a tilty trait. <laughs> uh, this is situationally good in any situation. And when you pair this up with like a you know a war master that gives you like immune to possession or you know freeze, what have you, stun, uh, it's really good. It's really, really good. <laughs> uh, do not, just not be bothered by any form of DOTs is relatively nice, especially on a tank. This is a really tanky monster, which things that amplifies its tank tankiness. Uh, so this is really good for it. This is probably the best trait it could ever have, given its moves. I, I will say this is the best trait that it could it could have. Period. <laughs> uh, for this monster specifically. Uh, no, you're not including like advanced exclusive traits like you know 50% chance what have you just like in terms of common traits or like traits that are considered you know just not like golden what ha it doesn't have a golden stuff around it uh this is pretty good this is this is pretty good <laughs> uh it's in the underworld and the evil legions book which is home to a lot of uh if i don't if i recall correctly here it's a home to a lot of uh dark based monsters you'll you'll see a lot of dark based and i believe uh, is there any magic monsters? No, just dark and light, yeah. Okay, so for the most part, you just see dark light and fire with some oddball natures in between, or elements in between. Uh, but for the most part, you, you, you'll be fighting dark-based or 
light based opponents, uh, and, and that's good because it, it has a lot of things that messes around with that. Uh, again, we're going to get to that in a bit. Uh, the relic slots, real quick, are the amulet and the sword. So, great sustain setup. He can run the ice breaking great sword, or he could, uh, well, that, you know, he could run the damage one, but really, you want you want ice breaking great sword, but boy, <laughs> well, boy, uh, just great tanking all around. Uh, give it more shielding. In fact, it, it lacks a shielding skill, so why not? Why not run ice breaking great sword? Run it with a freezer or a stunner and be good from there. Uh, it also can run a amulet. There's quite a few amulet options that you could run. I said, I'm gonna say it's situational based. If you're uh, running a lot of, st or you're dealing with a lot of stamina drainers, run the supercharged amulet and run something that runs a AOE stamina regen, and you'll find the whole game. You'll have plenty of stamina to do anything you really want. Uh, run a healing amulet just to increase your healing further. Uh, he doesn't even have he doesn't have healing either. I will say this monster lacks shielding and healing, so healing amulet and I think ice breaking great sword is the way to go. Uh, just in terms of any situation, if you just really want any situational based uh, opportunities, that's the best way to go. Uh, ultimate. Okay, we're gonna get to the nice stuff. This is the best thing in its entirety of its kit is the ultimate. It's a full reset. You get reset cooldowns, 100% life. Extra stand, you know, 100% stand on the back. You get everything. Everything is reset, and you get an extra turn. It's a full life reset and an extra turn, so you can do anything you want. Uh, you can do the skill and do anything you want after it because you get an extra turn to do anything you want. And I will say that he has, I I'd say two skills. I I'd say straight up two skills that he can take advantage of this ultimate with. Uh, First off the bat, we're going to talk about skill groups that are must-haves, in my personal opinion, in skill groups run, which is a first. There, there, there's never really been a time where there's been the straight-up two skills that you, 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 you want for your base kit. That's crazy. Well, it's, it's not crazy for this boy, because he has two good ones. The first one is Savage Attack. This is Savage, because it has a zero stamina cost on a one-turn cooldown. So even if you Thetes this monster, even if you time Muron this monster after, like, a turn, you, can, you know, after you, like, don't get cooldowns activated, you can use this skill. Uh, if you get Stamina Drain, you use it anyway. Bam, doesn't care if you're Stamina Drain. He'll do it anyway. This is a zero-cost stamina based AoE. However, the catch is it's earth based. It is a earth based skill. If this was special it'd be better. It's not uh, it's not good against earth based monsters. I think it's good against anything else though. As long as the condition it's not an earth monster itself, you're fine. Uh, if you're running Guava, I will say if you're running like Guava, I, I think you're f that, that means you're in a better spot. I feel like Guava is a good support for this monster. So even if the enemy is running an earth monster, uh, if you apply that weakness and you your boy uh, Wolfgang goes, uh, this will do a lot of damage, this will make up for that, uh, you'll go right through Earth Monsters. That's the nice thing with Guava, if you're running like water-based damage dealers or earth-based damage dealers along with Guava, uh, you don't really need double damage setup, as soon as you apply that weakness, uh, you do a lot of damage. <laughs> That's how that works. You, you apply that weakness and all the earth attackers and water attackers uh, can now just go in full throttle. It doesn't even matter if the enemy's wanting a water denier or an earth tank because you'll just burn right through it. Sadly, I will say sadly though, this only has two earth-based skills. Uh, they're both runnable, of course. But this other one here is only 30 damage. However, don't discount the effect on it. Deals moderate earth damage to all enemies, applies evasion to itself. This is a full cooldown of 4 turns, 24 stamina, uh, it has 30 damage. And it gives it evasion. Now I said in the beginning, this guy didn't have any shielding and he didn't have any healing. This is one of the things that make it relatively tanky. You get evasion for 2 turns, you're immune to any form of damage for 2 turns, however, you're not immune to deny. Like this, is, I don't think this is the special kind of evasion. I think that's important uh, because you can get chain denied, what have you. But if you're running War Masters, this kind of opens up to the possibility of not even caring. Uh, if you're running the Water and the Dark War, mo war Monster, <laughs> the War Masters, uh, if, you're, if you're running both of those on the team, uh, they can only resort to stunning, and that could even be chancy because odds are they, they might not even land the stun unless they're running like a Talika. Uh, but yet you have a prob high, high probability of getting your turns in and just them not being able to do anything to you. Uh, you've only ever seen this shenanigans on Taiga and like the uh, Yindra, like this evasion scale. Like this is the, the lower form of the two evasions. 
there there are two evasions. One that blocks everything, like literally everything. You can't get hit. You can't get stunned. Uh, you know, you can't get denied DOT, what have you. Uh, and then there's this one. This is the, the trash one. You, know, you only avoid the damage. You don't avoid the status effects. Uh, so you can be burned, you can be DOT'd, uh, denied, stunned, what have you, uh, yada yada. Uh, this is good for this monster specifically, uh, because he, has, he also has a lot of stuff that reduces his damage. Again, he can also heal that if he gets his ult. Uh, it's a very tanky monster. Don't, this thing doesn't really have any self-healing or shield. Again, he doesn't have any self-healing, uh, except for his, you know, ult. Uh, in terms of natural skills here, we're talking about natural skills, my boy. Uh, or shielding. But that really doesn't matter, <laughs> because you can you can avoid all damage altogether. And uh, drumroll, please, <laughs> please, uh, please, <laughs> uh, please, Dark Moon, uh, you know, transformation. This is a must-have skill too. Uh, this gives you uh, protections. This is a monster that applies a lot of protections. Uh, that's the that's the plot twist, everybody. He doesn't have shielding. He doesn't have healing, but he does have significantly reduced damage from specific types of damage. Uh, this is the most important one, I think. Uh, deals very heavy d uh, special damage to one enemy. Applies dark protection to itself. In hindsight, protection, you know, it's it's very specific, Deb. Uh, th th that doesn't seem to, you know, convenient. It is very convenient in a war situation where they bring, uh, you know, if they don't bring Xyofex, you know, let's say they bring, like, Undertaker. It doesn't really do anything. It can't really do anything to Wolfgang. So that, that's, I think that's really good. I think against situations where the dark monster only runs dark damage, uh, in all honesty, Earth, you know, Earth has one of the worst weaknesses in the entire game because it happens to be home to one of the best damage dealers in the game, which is dark. <laughs> dark is such a common element in this game; it's crazy. And to give yourself like half damage to that specific type can be really huge. That is so huge. Especially if you're running Rainbow. Like, if you're fighting a Barbatos, which not too common people live through, uh, Earth Monsters, period, don't live through the, uh, the single target uh, 90 base damage skill. If they're running the protection, they take a lot of less damage from that. I mean, like, the, the they're treated as, you know, dark monsters at that point. And, like, you get the, the if, you know, the uh, resistance. You pretty much get dark resistance. And so they're not going to take much damage at that at all. And that's amazing for this monster specifically. That's amazing. It's very good in one v one fights. It can, I think, it it can out one v one specific monsters. You know, specific attackers given uh, the dark, magic, and light because the other two resistance it can do is uh, light and magic. Uh, the next skill you run, uh, or like the next skill is crescent moon form. This is a magic protection. Uh, it's 55 damage. All these skills are 55 damage, so... I, I, they even run on the same stamina and cooldown, so we're not even going to go... We don't even need to go in-depth with that. Uh, just, we need to talk about each of the, the benefits of running the other protections. You for sure want Dark Moon Transformation and these two skills right here. So, the remainder move is totally up to you at this point, and we still haven't even gotten to skill group 3. In all honesty, my boy, skill group 3, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. But, uh, Crescent Moon Form, this is a magic protection skill, so this gives you against magic protectors. Now, if you guys don't know, uh, if the DOT, let's say you get hit by a DOT, um, I, I think a good example, let's say Scribe, you know, Scribe or Joustar, that gives you immune to all dark damage, that you can't be hit by dark damage, period, like, any, da like any dark attack that hits you, it does zero damage. The DOT, too, does also zero damage. If it's a dark base skill that applies a DOT, that DOT will do zero damage as well. So, that being said, I think protections function the same way. So if you get hit with a magical based attack that does a DOT, you are taking half DOT damage, too. And there's, a, there's a quite a few good DOT skills uh, that magic monsters have. Zyron the Ruby specifically, I think her AoE DOT is magic based. I, I, I think that was the case. Uh, I don't think she had a special damage uh, DOT that, uh, you know, did a DOT. So this is really good. I, I think this is the better one between light and or magic protection. I think you should grab the magic protection if, you, if between these two. Uh, I, I, feel, I feel like the situation's more better. Like, you, you'll, you use this more than any other things. Uh, believe it or not, my boys, uh, as soon as that magic monster or dark monster, whatever have you, 
your fighting is dead, this passive becomes irrelevant because, hey, they don't do that kind of damage anymore. <laughs> you're not going to take magic damage anymore. You're not going to take any form of dark damage anymore. Uh, so the passive just becomes irrelevant. So you want the most relevant uh, buff. So I, I think that between these two, I'd pick up the magic one because I'm pretty sure there are magic monsters that would do DOTs, you know, that are magic based versus, you know, light based protection. In terms of, in all honesty, my boys, in terms of light monsters that this is effective against, I feel like people would only ever bring, uh, I, I'd say the best one would be Alcanine. And that's just being, I, I think that's just on the, the DOT on the AoE stun. Uh, but beyond that, everyone's just running Gakora nowadays. Kokora. <laughs> Kokora is just kind of the man. Uh, I, I don't think you need this too. I, like, Kokora doesn't, is not even a damage dealer. And light damage, you know, you're just usually fighting light supports. I, I don't think you need this. I, I think the, the magic protection is more relevant. Uh, but if you don't want to run either of these skills, I will say you can pick up a skill in skill groups 3. Uh, but yeah, the, I, I'd say these three skills are the must, 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 must has. The, the last skills just totally play a preference. Uh, here's something interesting, though. I, I will say this is interesting. Or maybe, again, maybe you don't have to. Let's say just the, the two Earth skills are must have. I, I think the next two skills are fair game. Uh, the reason being all these skills in skill groups 3 uh, are relatively nice. Alrighty, so Dark Moon Howl. This is a moderate special damage skill. Applies Dark Hater and Dark Weakness to it. What? <laughs> Wait. Okay, so maybe, I, I think that, uh, there's no way it does that. Does it apply it to itself? Like, the dark weakness to it? Nah. I would say that's pretty trolly. <laughs> if it applies dark weakness to itself, I don't know if that's if that's safe. But if it applies it on the enemy target, uh, then that's good. Like, you, you get the dark hater. I, I wonder if you apply dark hater to yourself and then you apply dark weakness to the enemy. That makes more sense to me. If that's not the case, if this actually applies, like, both of these effects apply on you... <laughs> it, it might not be a good idea to do <laughs> it might not be a good idea to run any of these skills <laughs> but uh I, I think that's how it's supposed to work i think you apply the the good thing and then apply the bad thing to the enemy i'd pick up the dark dark weakness personally uh there's a lot more monsters that would work well with it uh but yeah you can run uh the, the rest of these skills are just the same damage and the same cooldown three turn cooldown 23 stamina 40 damage uh but you apply a hater hater is probably the one of the better buffs in the game for specific situations i bet i say it's the best situational buff uh and this one has a lot of situations uh where it can be fairly good you know if you're fighting a magic war running magic hater will just annihilate uh, after you you've procced this so once you proc this up uh your next swing will do triple damage and for sure kill it. Uh, it's also allows setup for other monsters that you have. So let's say you're running like a magic denier or a light denier. Um, they, they get more damage off this weakness. You know, you do 50% more damage. Uh, being the fact this is the damage dealer, for the most part, unless you're running another damage dealer, like a da like let's say damage weakener, like guava juice again, for example. Who can't really take advantage of any of these weaknesses, but Wolfgang can take advantage of the things he offers with his earth-based AoEs. Uh, they, it, it's more so, it's it's not too relevant at that point. <laughs> uh, it's, it's only relevant if you bring uh, a da another damage, or like kind of a damage support, or support that can kind of do damage. I, I feel like Guava is a great ex example of like, su like support debuffs, but also can do a like, ton of damage without even running damage. <laughs> like it does a lot of damage. Uh, so kind of just equip this to whatever you feel that is justifiable. If you want to run two of the weaknesses, uh, you could. That monster is also dead. I also like to note if you apply light hate, let's say light hater, and then do like dark moon howl, or like on, on the same target, or like the you know one of the AOEs, it, it's kind of dead. <laughs> if it's a squishy, it, it's just kind of dead. <laughs> uh, for the most part, the you know light monsters are usually deniers. Uh, you know, magic monsters are usually deniers, so y you kind of go good there. Now, I think you do a super effective damage against, um, let let's say you put this on an earth mon- oh, I suppose it's not it doesn't really matter, because they're not earth- <laughs> I was gonna say, if it was an earth monster, it, it doesn't have an earth weakness, so that doesn't really count. 
But, uh, this is, again, this is, like, equip this to monsters you plan on pairing this up with. Like, if you run these skills, have that in mind. You want to run a Heyman in some games, run Dark Hater, uh, you know, run this on a Dark Hater. Uh, because then you can apply the dark weakness on the enemy, and then Heyman can proc off that. Uh, they don't get the, the dark hater. Like, only Wolfgang gets the dark hater. Uh, but, you know, anyone can, you know, take advantage of the dark weakness that the skill applies. Uh, so I just gotta mess around with that from there. Uh, on its own, it's not a good damage skill. Like, uh, uh, like just based on the... The initial damage. The initial damage is just terrible. 40, da 40 damage. <laughs> all the skills do 40 damage. So the first swing doesn't do anything at all. Second swing will kill. Like, hands down. <laughs> uh, hands down. It can, it, it's really good at killing specific elemental targets. So dark, light, and magic. If it's any of those wars uh, situations, it's, it's good in those. Uh... So overall, what would I what would I personally run if I had Wolfgang? I'd run Savage Attack, a Shadow on the Forest, Dark Moon Transformation, uh, and I think the the final skill I'd probably choose would either be Dark Moon Howl, uh, or maybe maybe not Dark Moon Howl because again I'm I'm kind of tinky against Dark Monsters as it is at that point, unless it's like a Xylfex fight. Um, so again, I, I think that's personal choice, but I might just pick up the other resistance, like, like another, another resistance here. I'd probably either, I'd probably pick up the magic one for protection against magic DOT, any ma magic monster that runs magic DOTs. Uh, for example, I, I probably, I think Dungeon Master is a great example. Great Dungeon Master does elemental based, uh, she has an AoE that is magic that does DOT. So I, I I might do I, I'd probably run that one um, between again between the two uh, because this is only good in like the light protection doesn't really have much opportunity to shine because again everyone's just running Gakora Gakora is just really great <laughs> uh, and Gore doesn't do all that much damage to begin with so there's, there's really no point and if you if you talk if we're talking about like Invarv here too uh, it, I it might come more often than not so this this might be good against Invarv fights. Possibly, but uh, for the most part, I I pick up the magic one. I, I think between the two resistances, I, I pick up the magic one. The reason why I'm picking the another resistance skill, why I'd prefer it, is it just gives me another resistance to someone. Like so, it it just lowers the chance of them actually killing Wolfgang. Like if if it's just a magic monster and Wolfgang left, the magic monster can't do anything about him. <laughs> like there's nothing they can really say no to. And I find that fantastic. If it's a light monster one v one, and you're running the light, light skill, you know, running the light skill, uh, then you don't you don't have to worry about the light monster. The light monster can't kill you. Uh, then again, maybe picking up the light protection might not be a bad idea against damage return. Gakora likes to do damage return. I think you take half damage from the damage return. I think it's treated as light based damage, uh, so you could actually get a. I, I think that might be the better choice. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Mess around with it. If you're fighting more light monsters than magic, run the other one. I, I'd say base it on just what you're fighting a lot. <laughs> if you're fighting a lot of light monsters, run the skill. If you're fighting a lot of magic, run the other one. It'll do you better. Uh, the more relevant the skill is, the, the better it'll do you. Again, this thing only is as good as long as that monster is out. Um, once that monster is dead, you, this, this buff is kind of irrelevant. It's just there for the damage at that point. And the damage is acceptable. 55... Uh, it's, it's fairly moderate damage. I wanted to say extreme heavy damage. It's saying, it says heavy. It's 55. I, I'd say it's a basic skill in terms of damage. But yeah, uh, for sure, Savage Tech, Shadow on the Forest, Dark Moon Transformation, uh, and probably one of the other two protection skills. Uh, that's probably what I would go for. Um... With the with these skills in particular, like with the Dark Hater, Magic Hater, and Light Hater, these are extremely situational. And if you do wind up running the two, if you do wind up running two, that it, that means you only get to really kill one thing. I I don't think it's too good of a situation. Like it's too situational. Um, I'm not saying the buffs are bad. The buffs are really great. But once that monster is dead, it doesn't really do you any good anymore. It becomes a dead skill. Uh, and this monster can't really afford to have a dead skill. I I personally think. I don't think you want that. I, I think you want the... You just want to make it extremely tanky. So yeah, Savage Attack on the Shadow of the Forest. 
Dark Moon Transformation, and I'm still debating between Crescent Moon Form and Full Moon Metamorphosis. Uh, again, it's totally, I, I think it's totally uh, meta based, based, based on what's being used the most uh, at this time. I'm seeing a lot of Zyron Rubies, so you could possibly take less damage if the, the DOTs is magic based. I, I will say this is the one worth picking up. Uh, and I think that is magic based. I, I don't think uh, the DOTs are special based. I think the DOTs are magic magic based. So I, again, I, I picked this up. I picked this up ba again, basing on uh, just my knowledge of protection skills. That uh, so basically, like immune to all dark damage. You don't take any dark damage. If it's a dark, if a dark damage had a DOT on it, you take you take no damage from that either. So basing on that knowledge, uh, you take half damage from you know that specific elemental DOT. Two, so I, I pick up one of the other resistances. Uh, overall, it's a monster that's easily to look over. This monster is really, really easy. It's like uh, this thing doesn't really have OP damage. It doesn't really have uh, any DOTs, what have you. Uh, it just seems like a really easy monster to breeze. It's a fairly tanky monster. I will say this monster is really, really tanky. This it's it's really easy to look over this thing. It's a monster that doesn't seem threatening, but it is it is relatively tanky it's not easy to tip over i think the only time it is easy to tip over if we're if we're gonna be honest here uh maybe baratagor I, i'm gonna say situationally it's possibly baratagor uh is he worth running over baratagor i i kind of think not i, I think baratagor is still kind of the main man of the game the main earth-based attacker you kind of want to go with i will say this is a good alternative choice it's a really tanky choice um you might be able to actually sponge quite a bit of damage from Baratagor before he kills you. I, I get, I'd say like you'd live through a special bit, you'd live through a extra turn special base combo uh, if you're running Rainbow. I will say that um, uh, evasion skill. If you can apply your evasion skill before he actually gets to do anything, uh, I think you're solid. If it's yeah, I, I think it depends on your build. If you if you do go before uh, Baratagor. Uh, you apply that evasion, Baratagor can't really do anything to you. <laughs> in, in retrospect, you can't do much. Uh, so maybe, yeah, I think in terms of rune builds, I'd go Rainbow Rune or two speeds in a, a, either a life or a damage rune. And, and, and for most situations, you don't really need uh, to do high burst damage. This monster can live through a lot of damage. I, I feel like it's a really good sustain monster. Um... Yeah, I, I just think that. I think it's a great Earth tank. That's it, it's it's a misleading Earth tank. It doesn't seem like it can take a lot. It doesn't have any natural shielding or just like healing besides you know the ultimate ultimate full life reset again. Uh, but again, it's misleading. You d you don't think it'll sponge a lot? It sponges a lot. <laughs> it it should be sponging a lot of damage, uh, especially if the enemy is restricted to only elemental based damage. Uh, I also feel like his buffs can also be easily walked around like dark damage for example everyone's running xylfex nowadays no one's really running Zo razul or barbatos all too much as they used to because xylfex is just a really well balanced version of them like it even has a really really great trait and there's really no reason to you know use the you know the monster over them uh and xylfex damage is special based i, I feel like xylfex just kind of walks over this monster so a really good counter picks for this thing uh one baratagor baratagor easily uh, another is just xylfex xylfex can easily walk over uh wolfgang no problem at all uh if you have the war masters again this this thing is really great with war masters pair this thing up with like the necromancer and or uh the water based that gives immune to freeze because again you can't chain stun i will say if it's like a pure earth war uh maybe you want to pick up the aoe immune to stun war master uh that might do you good uh but for the most part you'll probably wind up facing like a possessor or freezer because that's chainable uh that's punishable uh so just run those things uh again totally situational based uh but that's all i really have to say overall really 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 decent uh uh, tank. Er really decent earth tank. Easily to look over, uh, but it, it can be fairly tanky. I, I think a lot of people are going to look over it. Uh, but it, it, it's a good pickup uh, for some situations. Again, it's, it's a really situational tank, 
but it, it's really tanky in this situation. <laughs> it, it thrives on like it's like a, a shark in water. If you're in water and you're fighting a shark, <laughs> that, that's not good. <laughs> if you're on its turf, that <laughs> that is not good. That that is really really bad. But uh, yeah, uh, that, those are all my thoughts on Wolfgang. Uh, oh, I hope you enjoyed this video, especially Wolfgang. I hope you watch this video at some point in time. I'm Dibs the Awesome, and I'll catch you guys later.